Hello and welcome. We are having a fantastic chat today with two very inspiring women. And this is a part of our breast cancer awareness, um, introducing you to new things and trying to inspire and help women out there going through breast cancer or have gone through breast cancer and are a survivor or have friends and probably one in three women or every single woman I know has somebody they know all themselves who is going through this. Um, so I'd love you to meet Love Rose, Caroline and Sarah. Darlings, tell me how the brand came about. It came about when um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and I went through my treatment, et cetera, and I couldn't find anything after that I liked that was even remotely like what I used to wear. So um, I did some research and I realized that other women felt the same. So that was the beginning of Love Rose. When you went through breast cancer, did you then have reconstructive surgery afterwards or? At the same time. At the yeah. same time. I had to have a double mastectomy with reconstruction because also I had to do the different stages. I know what you need to wear. I, I never really looked before I had been in the situation myself. And yeah, I was just really disillusioned. And how did the two of you meet? Um, we met in a vintage shop that I was working in at the time. I had just graduated. Carolyn mentioned Love Rose and said she was looking for someone, and this was right at the beginning, to do yeah. just initial prototypes, um, mm -hmm. start, the, start the kind of design. Yeah. And, and here we are, and here three we are. years later. <laughs> You know, when you have a great idea, it's one thing having that idea in your head and coming from a need that you see in the market. Yeah. But it's another actually building a business and getting uh, cash investment in. And you did a Kickstarter campaign, didn't you? We did a Kickstarter campaign and we did a lot of competitions and mm -hmm. we really had to kind of fight for every penny in the beginning because it's what was the initial amount that you felt this is what I need to raise to get the business off the ground well we actually won a competition which mm -hmm. uh, gave us about 45,000 pounds and then yep. we, we knew that that was not going to be enough yeah so we did a, a kickstarter campaign to just give us the rest of the amount that we needed just for the initial manufacturing run mm -hmm. so yep. that was about 15,000 15, yeah and yeah. that was great as well, just I think for a Kickstarter, it was great to get, to see that there was other women in this position that needed these products. I think yeah. that was amazing for us to see. It was great for brand awareness yeah. as well. Yeah. Just, and how many of those women became your customers? I would say mostly, Pretty much yeah, most all of them. them. Yeah. yeah, or, you know, a lot of them supported. We did that you could gift to a friend or yeah. family member as well. And that was a really popular option. So yeah. we did it for product. It was a kind of pre-order system. And lots of people, yeah, pitched in and, you know, bought for a friend or bought for a family yeah. member which just is really validated nice. our our business really mm. we, it is a great concept kickstarter and i know that now it's it's much bigger than it used to be and there are thousands of brands on there and you can sometimes get lost so how did you within that actually get people to look at your kickstarter page so, so a lot of work i mean yes yeah. yeah. the yeah the kickstarter that we went with um, as Sarah said, was product based. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you you have to put in a lot of the groundwork yourself. Yeah. Um, and Reaching out to a lot of you know media outlets and places like that, and just and friends and know. family as well, just asking them to spread the word. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think what's more difficult is when you are trying to grow your business after the initial investment, yeah. and mm -hmm. then that's when you're entering into a different landscape completely because. Yeah. You're looking at syndicates and investor groups and primarily run uh, male run yeah, and yeah. talking about breast cancer and bras yeah. and knickers yeah. to a room full of men is a completely different ballgame. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even, even I found in my experience talking about makeup, you know, I, I saw maybe 29 investors before I found somebody who got the idea and didn't want to slightly say it would work well if it was this. With Femtech and everything that's happening now, I do feel mm. that there is, um, it is better for women. I think there's more inclusivity now mm -hmm. with the yeah. syndicates. And mm. I think Femtech is definitely, there is a future there um, yeah. for them. And so that's encouraging for And so people. did you then, what was your next raise then? How much later after you'd raised that 60,000, did you then go? 
yeah. we're, we're deep we're, in it at the we're moment. We're deep actually. in that at the moment. We're deep in it. And what are you, what are you raising now? 400. 400,000. Yeah. So yeah. you've got product, you've proven sales, yeah. um, you've got an audience. Yeah. And how do you see you're going to grow the business? Well, so we need to, in terms of product, what, mm -hmm. what we're offering. So like we have a small percentage of what a woman's wardrobe would be in yeah. comparison to the mainstream market. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's what we need to do. We need to offer more. And mm -hmm. so we need to do swimwear. We mm -hmm. want to bring on an essentials line. We're going to do uh, nightwear as well. Yeah. So yeah. all of the things that for all of our ladies who are going through different stages mm -hmm. in, you know, whatever they need, we want to have a wardrobe there that yeah. they can choose from. Yeah. That it is one in X number of women. I don't know if you know those stats. It's um, one, one, yeah, one, one in eight. eight. One in eight. And yeah. that is a big number. I mean, that is 8% of the market. Yeah. It's that halo effect of what you offer and the emotional support as well as physical support that you give right. women. And, and, you know, with us, we try and be more than just a makeup brand. We're a community. We try to really you know, m make these women feel a part of what we're trying to do is make them feel better, which is exactly yeah. what you're doing. Exactly. And, and I think really ju nice. just because you've had an operation, mm. you know, I, I, you, I felt excluded. I used to spend so much money mm. on my lingerie you know, pre-cancer. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then afterwards, I was left with nothing to yeah. choose from. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to change. We're trying to bring a bit of luxury, yeah. you know, beautiful fabrics. Yeah. We are also sustainable. So, you know, as a new brand in this market, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to shake it up a bit. So, yeah, I think it's fabulous. I mean, I've got a box from you here yeah. Yeah. and um, I'm not, I'm not going to model it because it, it, it was, um, I haven't, I mean, I could model it actually, because it's so pretty. Is it in my size? But they are, they are in their size. I mean, they are divine. I, I'm actually just going to put one on because they look gorgeous. And there's a front fastening one, which I haven't done that for years. Yeah. I don't know which color to choose. They're so good. And you've got knickers. I can't do the knickers. Well, I could do the knickers as well. Give me one second whilst I just put a bra on. <laughs> um, obviously, with um, any person post breast cancer, it's about not having the underwire bra. Isn't it? Well, for us, we do feel that because, mm -hmm. I mean, I think there are a lot of soft bra options. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've engineered them. Um, and so they should be able to hold it up to a G cup. Yeah, we found that a lot of women have heavier breasts, possibly, and they're just not served in that non-wired bra market. Yeah. So there's five different bras with different kind of features. So they mm -hmm. suit different outcomes of surgery. Just, you know, I just got to say that's a fab bra, whatever. I don't like underwear. I don't wear it. My breasts aren't big enough. But um, it's really interesting also because when I dress women who've gone through breast cancer, they're very aware if they have, um, you know, if they haven't had reconstructive surgery, mm -hmm. where the line is and the cut of the bra. And you must have thought about that a lot. We thought about, yeah, all of our seam placements, all of our apexes, all of our center fronts, they're all thought, thought through on each bra for what yeah. surgery outcome you've had. Yeah. So, for example, our, like, our bra, that, our everyday bra that you wear if you have a prosthesis, has a higher centre front and it's just a higher apex. It's a little bit more kind of flattering if you've got anything that you want to cover and it's really, really thoughtful if you've had a single or a double mastectomy, going kind to of balance your prosthesis out. So all of those kind of things. And front-facing. I mean, I love the idea of front-facing because I hate putting my hands behind my back. But are there yeah. other reasons why you do that from the perspective of the market you're in? Because so, yeah, some of some of our ladies have um, their latimus dorsi is mm -hmm. being made into a breast, is reconstructed mm -hmm. into a breast, and so that kind of really stops you being able to go yeah, to the back. It your kind of movement. Um, so definitely, the front fastening is helpful there. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the bra that you tried on there, Trini, is is for a reconstructed breast. Mm -hmm. yep. um, the the heavy underband is very supportive mm -hmm. and that one has got multi-way straps so it's got like you can have it as a halter neck you can mm -hmm. have it as oh that's lovely yeah I mean, that is, really and lovely. also you have a pocket inside for the prosthetic don't you well you could wear a little you could wear like a soft a little softy but that's like that's a soft kind of and fill it. Yeah, yeah that's also kind of yeah. a support hammock to give you a bit of lift i've got <laughs> this one which is super pretty as well so that's, I mean, I love, yeah. oh, I just that's say, that one's a great that yeah. one's a really really flattering i'm grateful i'm wearing that one at the moment 
great yeah. for like a bigger chest. It's really supported, especially in our bigger sizes. We the we use recycled mesh, so it sizes up, and we give it a bit more, a little bit more support. I've just got to say, just opening this box of goodies, it, I just feel how incredibly feminine they make me feel. And this is, you know, I think. I have trouble with that anyway, just as a woman, because I'm the opposite of you. I never really bought sexy laundry because I felt I didn't have breasts and postmenopausal, I got breasts. But I feel that. And I think when you, we all talk, and you know this from personal experience, and you talked about that sense of you loved your lingerie and post, um, post, you know, as a breast cancer survivor, you're feeling that lack of feminine. I feel so feminine in these. Oh, yeah, I mean, that was the real goal. And I'm yeah. really glad that, that you feel that. Mm, and even yeah. in how we package them and mm -hmm. we they arrive, you know, when I sent away for some bras after my surgery, they arrived in a poly bag. Yeah. Stood on the you table. You know, and they stood on the table like little <laughs> sculptures. I'm five foot three. And, you know, they went from my neck down to my waist. Yes. One of the things that we really wanted to do was yes. to make yes. sure that this was almost a gift to yourself, yeah. you know? to make you feel good you put it on every day and you should feel empowered and that's and love yourself accept yourself after yeah. all of these things that you've been through this is gorgeous on you because this yeah. is a different um this is a different uh neckline yeah. yeah and the underband is like a little little bit larger than a normal underband so yeah it's really i'm wearing it well it feels really really supportive I mean, I think yeah. every bra should have this underband anyway, because I think that the sort of time of those really thin underbands, I mean, I love that. Yeah. For every woman, it's like back fat, you know, you don't have that ripple mm -hmm. when you're wearing something like that. So I think that works. I mean, there's more and more here. I've found another one here, which I love. I think you might not in that box have a, the pocketed, the fully pocketed one. So that's our see you at nine bra. So we've got a sister one to that, which is... Okay, which yeah. Is and I think because I'm not a breast cancer survivor, you haven't done me the fully pocket yeah. one, yeah. which is appropriate. Yeah. So I just want to say that, I mean, I think what you're doing is fantastic. And I really feel, I hope that that raise goes well. Um, we love having women on the on our platform who can inspire us and you two have so inspired me today. Oh, thank and you. I really, I wish you a tremendous amount of success um, when you think of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, what does it mean to you? Well, I think, you know, there are 11 more months in the year is what it means to me. Um, mm -hmm. I am delighted that it gets the special attention in October. Don't get mm -hmm. me wrong, because it is so needed, especially after the year we've had. Yeah. Um, yeah. And But, you know, we live and breathe it. I mean, it's the reason we exist. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm going to say that I welcome it. Mm -hmm. um, but I would like to say to everybody that don't forget about the other 11 months as yeah. well. Don't forget about the other 11 months. Yeah. They, they need and it. you have an association with Make Seconds Count. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, Sorry. they're they're one of our charities. The yeah. other the other people that we support are Maggie's, and we love. Uh, Copperfield and Trek stuff as well. I mean, it's very hard for us to pick it's very up. hard. I mean, there's too many. I love Maggie's and I've been a supporter yeah. of Maggie's over the years as well. It yeah. gives support to women undergoing breast cancer treatment. Remember that all of our bras come with matching pants and you can mix and match depending I on your... And I mean, I would put them on, but I'm just feeling that I've got to that's, do that's okay. and stuff. I well, mean, the main to... thing for me with, with pants is that um, I wear pants without any lace because I just always wear very silky, like I wear those pajama things. What's nice about your lace is it's like a mesh. Yeah. I just want to tell people who are watching, it's really, I feel like we're on QVC, but I have to say it's fabulous. <laughs> it's, so, it's so soft. Yeah. And so lace sometimes to me, when you wash it, you yeah, know, yeah. it can become harder. No, I and so. I love the softness and I know on my skin mm -hmm. that would just, you know, I, I wouldn't sh really sh be showing up through clothing. No. no, and that's what we spent so long looking for, a the lace, right. the right. right lace. It took us so long and it was something that we wanted, something that was super soft against skin, because obviously- And it's after, recycled. Yeah, after you've been through surgery- it's have recycled, have brilliant. Sensitivity, yeah. have scarring, all of those things that you really need to think about. Yeah. Well, Caroline, Sarah, thank you so much for chatting to us today. Oh, and thank you for much us. We really, I, I just, I've learned a lot too. And for those of you watching, if you yourself are going through breast cancer or post breast cancer, and you're wanting to rediscover your full femininity as a woman, this is a phenomenal brand. And for those of you who have friends who are also going through it, a wonderful gift. Thank, Thank you, you so much for talking to me. Thank bye. you, bye. Okay, bye-bye.